All right. So, um, yeah, I'll share the screen again. So welcome, everybody. Um, this is the official last meeting that I have of 2020. Thank the Lord it's over. And, um, and the last working group meeting. So thank you for coming and joining us. I don't have a huge agenda today. Um, I'm just sharing that. A few people have wandered in over the past um, little while, so I wanted to make sure we had this meeting in case they showed up. There was a gentleman from um, IBM, Michael Turek, um, who was interested in PPC 64LE support for OKD. Um, and he came in the other day and, and asked a question about that. And um, there was also a person from the um, Ansible team who asked um, for some time, but I doubt they're going to show up today either. So um, I'm just going to groups. His name, that was Timothy Afno, who's a red hatter. And he had a project on the Ansible content collection for OKD, which he asked us all to take a look at. And I'll put the link to that in here. I had not heard about it or tested it, and I'm not sure anybody here had either because it seems to have um, not made it. I'll stop sharing again and throw it into the chat. If people want to take a look at it over the holidays, he'd appreciate that if he's not here. The IBMer I can't talk to. Hey, Joseph. Hi. There you go. And for some reason, James, you're in here twice, but um, I believe that. So that's that's what um, those are the two things that came in. I think the current release, Christian, if you have any updates on that, um, any feedback on where we're at. So yeah, uh, we're preparing the next 4.6 uh, Zstream release. Um, it's been quite. 4.6 has introduced uh, quite a few. Oh, we've had some fallout with 4.6 because uh, the the switch over to Fedora 33 packages came rather late in in the cycle. So yeah, we, we hit a few issues, um, especially with regards to networking DNS um, because the underlying uh, OS uh, Fedora in 33 had some major changes. Um, how they, yeah, for, for example, they use uh, Resolve D, um, and um, we had to revert that change for now uh, to make it work. Um, everything is being worked on, though. I can paste a link to the current tracking bug for the next stable release. Um, so, and in the future, we will actually streamline this. Um, just yesterday, a raw height. Uh, Fedora CoreOS stream uh, was introduced, so we'll have um, that testing much earlier in the future on the future package set of, of Fedora and hopefully not run into um, issues as big as, as uh, this time around. Um, Although I have to I say my OpenShift clusters are running just fine, so I'm not sure what you guys are doing. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, I think for those who don't hit those problems, um, because they only affect a subset of platforms. I think for those of you, um, everything should continue to work fine. We do have one issue with our uh, image mirroring at the moment. Uh, there was a yeah. some breakage in Podman um, that currently the images that we push to Quay don't have the correct uh, manifest version um, and those can't be uh, mirrored, I think, um, with the with the OC command uh, into your local ring. Um, so uh, those with an offline uh, installation setup uh, probably won't be able to install 4.6 at this time. Um, there are, yeah, that, that is being tracked in Podman, and I think a fix is in the works. Um, we'll just have to wait till that lands in Fedora land. Um, I, yeah. I did do a I, I did do a mirrored install of not the eleven twenty seven release the twelve what was it twelve twelve and it worked 
Um, yeah, I, I think it's mostly an issue with the with the images that we mirror from Prowl out to Quay uh, as an official release. So all the internal um, builds on, on our internal uh, Prowl cluster, uh, they should work. It's just the step that actually pushes them out to Quay uh, that introduces those changes in the manifests, uh, apparently. And uh, if you pull it from, from Quay, um, you, you might hit those problems. Yeah, it's uh, still a problem for us. Bruce but... or, or Joseph, did you try it with the 12, 12 release? Yeah, the 11, 20, I... Even the 1127 release, I, I had to do a force upgrade of it, but I am pretty sure. Which latest... release are you talking about? Um, Just a minute, I'm pulling up. The 2020-12-12. Um... The yeah. Yeah, that's when they took uh, my system down. Oh, it, oh, it did? did. The upgrade took it down. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. Okay. It's very we always get mirroring errors. It's not working for us. Right. It wasn't. A, I wasn't trying to uh, do it from a repo internal repository, a mirrored one. Um, no, it was very strange. One of the, it, it worked perfectly until the very end when it upgrades the nodes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then. Uh, uh the uh there was one node that got an OBS configuration failure for some reason because it was it was started up and it started up fine. Uh but then when it rebooted it, it wasn't there anymore. And so that node failed and then uh there was sort of a cascading things. Uh my uh rook set failed and then that took down the registry in Im the image registry. Uh, and for some reason, even though there are, like, Rookstuff does have two nodes that it's on, uh, the, uh, OBS things are in a, uh, uh, you know, totally dead. Uh, so my Rook cluster is down. Uh, so I, I got the image registry back by going with a, a, a zero image, image registry, basically. Uh, but but of course all of the uh, I, I've got uh, I don't know hundreds of pods that are in uh, you know that can't get their images to uh, restart et cetera et cetera so uh, so I, I think it was all somehow and uh, and uh, I've got something on the uh, the 395 report on that but it does seem slightly different from the other failures uh, and uh, I've been doing you know, archaeology through uh, logs and things and nothing quite i don't quite see why it didn't why it didn't do that what hypervisor are you running on um i'm running on i don't know uh, it's uh whatever vmware okay Fear. is using vsphere so uh, if i understand you right uh, then uh, we can do nothing about uh, this mirroring problem, but um, as soon as you have the proper version of Podman in your Prow system, uh, the things will be fixed automatically. Is this correct? Um, yeah, I think it's it's a it's two things here: the mirror step uh, first, and then you also use I think Podman within. Um, or at least the, this container uh, image, containers image library within OC uh, when you actually um, mm -hmm. mirror that over uh, within the client. So uh, yeah, as far as I can tell, the the fix we're hoping uh, that we're hoping will resolve this is the one I just linked uh, and that you also linked, Joseph. Um, yeah. We, I'm not sure uh, how, how this came to be and how, how this could be missed. Uh, obviously, it's very unfortunate. Um, I think uh, RHEL and uh, RHEL CoreOS use an older version of Podman, which is why they're not affected. Um, so yes, uh, until this issue is resolved, uh, we will probably stay broken, unfortunately, with it, in regards to, to that manifest issue. Uh, but but this means also that we have to update OC the OC client uh, yes, to get it always, working. 
you should always update your client binary um, when when installing um, yeah mm -hmm. installing or migrating to a new version. Okay, that's good to know. Good to know. In general, the the rule of thumb is uh, it is okay to have your client binaries on the bleeding version because every it, it is generally backwards compatible, not forwards. Exactly, mm -hmm. um, and that, that's actually a pretty strict rule. So we're, um, yeah, we're definitely looking at being backwards compatible. Forward compatibility obviously isn't, uh, you know, we, we can't promise that, but uh, we're pretty good at, at, you know, for example, if you have the 4.6 client, you can install a 4.4 cluster with it. That that should work, and that is actually supported, I think, in the uh, in the OpenShift product. So it'll it'll also work with OKD. Okay, that's good to know because I'm not sure if you always update the OC client uh, with new versions. Yeah, you yeah, generally okay. should do that because things yeah. get kind of wonky when you don't. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially with the introduction of new um, APIs, uh, you know, CRDs, um, that'll, you know, they will, will just not be supported in, in the newer client. Um, obviously, that's mostly a problem when you have um, minor version bumps, not patch patch releases, um, but still, um, it's it's definitely best practice to always uh, keep up to date. And you, it's uh, yeah, it's safer to to just be up to date and be at the uh, leading edge um, with the client because it's always backwards backwards compatible. Okay, thank you. That reminds me of something though. Uh, the OpenShift client package in Fedora is still on 3.x, actually, I think it's still on 3.10 even. It's not even on the last of the 3x version. We what should do? probably <laughs> take that to Fedora Devel and um, deprecate the package, retire it. Get, get that package out of there. <laughs> can, can I mean, I would suggest we should probably just have it upgraded to the latest to the latest versions because, like, that makes it easier for people to, you know, go between FCOS, OKD, and and Fedora and stuff. And it's not like there's API promises from a single from a binary program that you just, you know, you you can't like build depend on on the OpenShift clients and like embed some of its code into something else. That's not a thing that that package lets you do. So. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, uh, obviously, uh, ideally, we, we uh, I'm, I'm not sure it's worth the effort of, of maintaining that uh, spec file. And I'm not even sure, I, I do think we have some RPM build for OC in, in CI somewhere for testing, but um, nothing really consumes that RPM uh, right now. We, we used to consume it uh, from the RPM but now it's just uh, really being passed around, um, just you know, the build binary. So Neil, how do how do we get that um, deprecated, or wh where is that out in Fedora land? What's the process? Well, I mean, you'd have to talk to the maintainer of the OpenShift clients package, which I think yeah. that is. Given the age of the package, they <laughs> they probably don't even know they're the maintainer anymore. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I mean, is it it, let's see. The origin package is owned by Justin Kaha, who is uh, who is a Red Hat employee. Still? Yes. Good. That's always a good sign. All right. Can you put a link to it or something in the chat so that we can yeah uh, track it down and clean it up? E. And so, Christian, your druthers is just to have it deprecated and not replace it with the newer one. Yeah, because um, I mean, wh Actually, once it's we full open shift three. <laughs> I have T-shirts from them. I do have T-shirts from them. <laughs> that package is all of open shift three. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, nobody's maintaining that anymore. <laughs> yeah, we had a look at that uh, last year when we uh, started to. Uh, you know, do OKD4, and um, it was decided it's not really viable for us to go through RPM packaging for everything. Um, and especially because there's, 
there's rapid changes, right? Uh, we could obviously build uh, OC DD or the, the origin package for each OKD release. Uh, but what we current, currently do is just take that from, uh, from CI, like all the other artifacts, and um, you know, have conti continuously have the, the most up-to-date version in there. Obviously, that it, it would just be an extra step that I'm, I'm not sure is worth the effort at, at this time. Because we don't really, none of the OKD parts are, are packaged in a Fedora, you know, distro way. Um, it's mostly just uh, container images. So, uh, and there's actually the artifacts image, which, which includes uh, those binaries too, um, that you can extract them from. So um, I, I would say we just focus on shipping our artifacts as containers without introducing that overhead of packaging in RPM. I'm pretty uh, well. I wasn't going to ask for everything to be shipped that way, but I'm pretty sure even um, even uh, OCP has OpenShift has the has the client shipped as an RPM for people to use it that way, because a lot of them consume it and deploy it onto machines for that mechanism. So, so I know at least at some there is definitely some used packaging for the clients. Rel does ship an RPM. The last time I had to go, I went through the OCP stuff. They were definitely telling me that there's the client packages are, the clients are available as RPMs that can be installed on workstations for mass provisioning and fun stuff like that. Might be 311 too. <laughs> that would be bad, considering that doesn't work with with OCP4 at all. <laughs> All right. Well, I, we'll see what we can do. I'll see if I can track down the the, co the guy who's responsible at RPM and just ask him if he can either depreciate it or give us his opinion on that too. But probably just ask him to depreciate it. Yeah. I mean, the other bit about you know having the clients in in Fedora itself is that you know Fedora is starting to have OpenShift based infrastructure and having the community be able to like work with OpenShift based applications and stuff. So having the clients easily available through there makes it a lot more straightforward for that to be plugged into basically like a ton of workflows. So not again, so there, there are there are compelling reasons to at least have the clients in there. But yeah, we probably should just get rid of the full legacy origin package because um that scares the crap out of me that that's still there. <laughs> okay. So so I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can track it down and I'll add it to the, the list of things and the list and, of and things. And since that is really downstream from, from OKD, anybody, anybody can really, and anybody can step up and package that. Uh, that's just the, the standard Fedora packaging process. Um, yeah. So if there's any volunteers who want to uh, tackle that, um, you're very welcome. We'd, we'd appreciate it. So. Yeah. We'll see if if the original owner is up for it, Jay Kalka. I wouldn't bet on that, but yeah, we I can would, always. I, I would neither, but uh, I think is how it spell, was spelled with a J. Okay. Uh, Christian, I saw that you're writing uh, again on the enhancement uh, docu document recently. Um, what will be the impact if it is uh, if it is uh, uh, granted by by your your colleagues? What, what will, will be the follow-ups? So the the main uh, or the the biggest part that's still left to do is getting the installer merged, and um, we, we've kind of uh, just made the enhancement into a kind of a checklist. Uh, most of that is already implemented and has already been done so it's really um yeah just to to summarize all of that um so the installer pr that that is linked in the enhancement that vadim uh, created is the biggest missing piece there uh, and then we will th there will be discussion either on the pr itself or on the on the enhancement i i, I would suggest you follow both uh, if if you want to um, monitor that closely um, and because we've had changes in the installer team, there's a new team lead. Um, so 
yeah, we will see whether that approach uh, is fine with them. Uh, it certainly works. It's what we have in, in the in the OKD fork of the installer currently. Um, and it kind of allows us to build both the OKD and the OCP binaries from the same branch, uh, which is yeah, what we want to do like with the machine config operator. Mm -hmm. um, so it is not a blocking issue. It's really just kind of tech depth cleanup nothing uh, anybody really has to worry about, uh, but it will help Vadim and, and me, um, you know, with, with maintenance because we, we mm -hmm. can uh, then drop the maintenance of the, of the uh, fork uh, that we have. Uh, we've been rebasing it, uh, so there isn't really, uh, as, you, as you know, uh, Joseph, we've, we've been rebasing yeah. that and uh, yeah. over push, pushed over uh, some of your commits. Uh, Unfortunately, with the Azure support there as well. Um, yeah, things like that shouldn't obviously shouldn't happen in the future, um, which is why we want to really tighten that up and get that. And um, uh, do you think, because I I saw um, that you proposed to test um, on uh, the release on Prow, is does this include that OKD is tested on more platforms, not only on AWS to to catch errors on the other platforms, maybe? Is, is there a chance to do that also with OKD? Yeah, um, so I'm, I'm not sure how we have configured it currently, but when we do this release promotion, right, our, our, our releases are just promoted from PRA, from, from CI, right? So we mm -hmm. have this uh, continuous uh, system that always has the newest uh, parts of, you know, of, of all the repositories, and then when we decide to, to push a release, we'll just take that most current uh, date of things uh, and, and tag that as a release and a mirror to Quay. Um, so yeah, I, um, I, I lost my, uh, what was the question exactly? The question was, um, because it's only tested on AWS at the moment. All right. Oh yeah. We, we, if, we, uh, when we do this promotion, uh, we we run end-to-end -end tests, and we have the ability to run those on on all the platforms where we have OKD available, um, except for oh. things like Azure, where we don't have an image. Um, we, we could maybe even make that work there. But yeah, I, I'm not sure right now. It's probably just AWS. But we really want to make the releases, um, yeah, tested uh, more. And I'm not sure they're probably just uh, running, but not blocking uh, at this time. Um, but yeah, that is definitely a thing uh, we want to ensure in the future more as well. And that, that's even going that, that's going to be easier as well when we have just one installer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Another question? <laughs> Sorry, I have a list. I think it's the last one on my list. But um, do you have any news about, I, I was um, looking today in, in the operator hub and was searching for, for yeah, Tekton, the Tekton operator. I, I found one, but I'm not sure in the community catalog if it is from Red Hat or is it if it is something different. You know what the state sure with this operator? The what, what's the so, name of it? Can, yeah, can you share your screen screen and just show us which one you're you're looking at? It's it's Tekton operator. I can try to uh, find it. Yeah, which version? Because there was an extremely old one there. Yes, it looked not the newest one. Tekton. It's. Uh, it's this one, and it's the same version as in the repos. I don't know. Because the Red Hat version is uh, one uh, dot two dot one, and this one is dot uh, fifteen something. I don't know because it's the same version as in the repositories uh, on Operator Hub, but the Red Hat uh, version is uh, version um, different. Oh, you're you're not talking about the. Operator Hub inside of OpenShift. You're talking about Operator Hub .io. Yeah. Uh, yes. Because in the in the Operator Hub, the the one integrated in uh, OKD, I, I did not found it. Oh, yeah. this is um, uh, 
point fifteen dot two. Uh, let me go to the GitHub page. It says it was created in August of this year, so I would suspect it's not the mo re most recent. E either way, that that is a an upstream uh, yeah. operator mm -hmm. that is essentially for running uh, on vanilla Kubernetes. Um, okay. So that might that might work on OKD. I, I'm pretty sure it, it'll work, but it's not you know tailor made for for OpenShift. Mm -hmm. So all the uh, operators in the in the catalog that you get on on your OKD installation, they're actually made just for OKD as the as compatibility uh, variants of the supported operators. Yes, and you're we're right. Still working internally to get a kind of to, to develop a strategy uh, how we how we develop things here with our uh, you know default to open upstream first policy. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, that because we have quite a few, quite a lot of teams that, that make operators. And so far, not a lot of them have um, implemented that kind of strategy. Uh, we, yeah, I'm working internally um, to, to make that uh, part of the default release strategy to kind of uh, have regular and, and timely uh, community releases there as well. Mm -hmm. For the time being, um, the easiest is to build them yourself. Um, I get, I, I'd say uh, so. Th you can go to the repositories. There's uh, the container images and everything there, and then you can kind of build them from there, create your own uh, manifest. And even that way, we, we could uh, even allow for those builds or for the for those. Um, Package manifests, if, if you create them, to be to be added to the community operators. Um, yeah. Because the, what we currently don't have is this this release automation, right? We we have release automation for our internal builds, but then we, you have to kind of copy everything manually over into the uh, community operators repository. Um, this one I just po uh, pasted. Mm -hmm. and once it's added there, it'll automatically show up in your OKD clusters. Um, so ah. what we really want to do is get all the teams to uh, to create those PRs and, and you know release to the OKD uh, or to the to the operator hub catalog that is included in OKD. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you can always do that your, uh, yourselves as well. If if you see an operator and it's you know, it's not there yet. Uh, you can kind of add it to the, this catalog. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, which which would be uh, if if for, for something the community wants to help with, um, that is probably something um, they can actually get get ahead of us uh, internally as well. By could could we do something like a um, a hackathon on community operators? Um, post that and then get somebody from the opera. I mean, I I could. Is, is that a worthy thing to spend energy on, is to build all the ones that we need um, for once 4.6 is stable, um, to go and build it, and then then the next iteration of 4.6 would pick all of that up? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Um, so yeah, I, I think that would make sense because I'm, it's it's not a super quick process internally to get all the teams to change their, you know, to, their release methodology here, and because it's also extra work for them, we don't currently have automation for it, which is kind of probably the biggest blocker for. If if, there, if it was just one more click for everybody, that they'd easily be able to do it. But it is um, a bit more work. So I think yeah, having a hackathon because because we can do that work ourselves as a as a community working group. Um, so everything we'll, is open source. We just have to uh, kind of build images, push them somewhere on Quay, for example, and then add those manifests yeah. to the catalog so they are picked up by OKD. I, I did it on my own for, uh, for example, for the uh, for this operator, for the uh, Tecton pipeline operator. It worked uh, very good. I had to push it in my own Quay uh, 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 directory because I uh, for sure have not the access to the official one 
but if there would be a script that would uh, fully be prepared to um, the only a guy with, uh, with uh, the proper access rights uh, can start the script and, and it will be built and pushed, uh, I think it would be very, very cool. So maybe we can prepare that and only a, yeah, a guy from the from the pipeline team uh, regularly presses or calls the script. I think it would be a, a huge step forward. I think in, in the long term we can uh, aim at that. Maybe for the for the time being, um, we should uh, consider creating our own uh, repository on Quay. Maybe for this working okay. group um, and kind of uh, manage those images uh, within our group because yeah. Oh yes. The, the, Pushing images to Quay, you know, everything is built internally in the CI system. Mm -hmm. And then when they release it, they have a a totally separated internal system for building those releases um, and essentially making those releases for Quay would replicate that. So it's not, they, they would do it, but it would have to be super easy. There's probably not even, most of these images aren't even pushed out to Quay at all at the moment. So they, they'd have to create a repository for it and you know, then set up some kind of automation to, upon a release or upon manual triggering, um, mirror that to Quay. Mm -hmm. So um, I do think in the long term we want that, definitely, because we want the images to just you know, be autom automatically pushed uh, on a release uh, out to the community variant as well. Yeah, but I think for now it's probably easiest to just do that in our own namespace, but instead of you know each one of us doing that um, ourselves, do it once as a group and maintain yeah. that kind of. Uh, yeah. the, the I love this ideas. idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm thinking um, that that when we come back in 2021 at the next working group meeting, if we could that we could also invite some of the people who created the operators to come to that hackathon too, or the people in charge of the pipeline of uh, building them all um, so that we could do it as a cross community collaboration. They can, maybe we give them uh, a lightning talk to talk about their operator and then we hack on it and get our build for it. So mm -hmm. do, do something in that spirit um, so that we get them engaged and they see what our problem is and may see that we're moving forward and that maybe that would inspire them to incorporate the OKD builds in their workflows um, once they understand what's in OKD um, and it won't feel so bad like they're doing on their own um, uh, with no no appreciative audience. So um, let's, let's think about that maybe for February. I was thinking about March to do uh, OKD end user summit and but it sounds like people might need these community operators a little sooner than March um, or some of them. But maybe if you could, um, Joseph, do that first one with Tecton and move and and put it into this operator hub thing and keep sort of a journal of what you did, um, so that we can turn that into a set of instructions. Yep. And that might be if a good you, good start, so that the first whatever the first meeting is we have in 2021 in January. I don't know what the date is at the moment, but um, we could talk about doing that, and then you'd have a, a little set of documentation and have already done one. Um, and we can see if that worked and, and if we need to create our own Quay space for, um, for ours. But um, then, because I'm pretty tied in with the operator community folks, so um, I could probably find everyone um, to come and do something like that. And, um, so should I use uh, my private um, Quay uh, repository for, for the uh, operator hub or uh, for the community? Uh, operator yeah, hub I, or... I think for now um, you can uh, open a PR to the community operators repository referencing the images in your own namespace and then okay. review the PR and everything will uh, rebuild or mirror the images then uh, into a new location in our OKD in the OKD working group uh, namespace and then we'll update you, you can update the PR uh, later mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to do not block you on this. Uh, feel free to just open the PR because mm -hmm. I think the the biggest the, the biggest contents of that PR would be that package manifest and the all the bundle, yep. all those uh, YAML files. 
mm -hmm. that you can hopefully just uh, copy from the yeah fr from the Tecton CD pipeline operator repository. Mm -hmm. And that is actually what we've been doing in, in the Windows uh, machine config operator that that was kind of the first operator that was just released for OK uh, for, for OCP and but we've had releases for OKD for I think more than six weeks now. So mm -hmm. um, that was kind of the, the first operator where we strictly did that um, kind of upstream first okay. community nice. first um, paradigm. And now we want to take that uh, and make all the other teams do it, do it the same. But obviously that is a, it is a longer process because uh, even in, in the Windows team, there's one person who, who just does it manually, right? They, they build the images, mm -hmm. they push them they, because they have the secret, they push them to Quay um, and then they update uh, the operator, uh, the, the community operators um, yeah. repository with those changes. But and, and, we will have yep. to automate that um, yeah. for, mm -hmm. for it to be viable for all teams. It's still like too, too many manual steps. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if we can kind of go ahead now and create the first versions of uh, of the community operators, it'll then also be easier to just tell the teams, look, it's already in there. You only have to kind of update the already existing operator, uh, which is much less work than this initial, what do I have to put in into the community operator repository? Um, but if there's yeah. already a version there, that can just be taken as a template for the next one. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I will do that. Um, and uh, the very last question, a uh, short one, the version uh, from the Tecton operator compared to the OpenShift version is completely different, but I don't find any clue in the repository um, of this version 1.1 used in OpenShift. It's there is only a version uh, zero dot fifteen dot anything. Are you sure that the source code from OpenShift of the OpenShift version so is, is still the same? The, the, the version, the the OpenShift version is the the product version of OpenShift pipelines, not Tecton. The zero dot because I think I'm running zero dot sixteen dot eight. Right now, that's the version of tech. Ah, you mean, okay, it's the operator version, but, ah, okay, yeah, yeah, I understand. Ah, okay, yeah, that's, yeah, okay, that's, uh, makes sense. Exactly. Thank you. For, for our community uh, operators, we could either have a completely new versioning scheme, or we could uh, look at the Red Hat uh, operators version and, and kind of, stick to them. Um, but yeah, it is really, uh, the versioning is kind of separate from the, the project, okay. uh, the, the operator concerns itself with. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Joseph, if you look at the branches in that um, Tecton CD pipeline operator, um, that's where you see the version that corresponds with what's in OpenShift. Mm -hmm. There's a v1.1 yeah. and a v1.2. Right, but if you crack open those files, um, look inside of the of the mm -hmm. YAML, those have the versions of the the images that are being pulled, and that corresponds okay. to like the the zero dot fifteen or zero dot sixteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, Joseph. That cannot be your last question of the year. <laughs> it's. Uh, I think I, I took uh, very much of the time of this meeting. It's. Yeah. It's okay. I think right. that is quite okay. So. Um, so it. It sounds. Sounds like the hack. Maybe merging the hackathon and the contributor summit or doing some two-day thingy. Um, might be in February or March. Might. Might work out nice. Um, unless. And. And let's. Let's just bring it up at the next call on in January and see if we can get that moved forward. Um, are there anything I, else? I think it's a good idea to invite those operator team. Um, yeah. Have them present their operator and then have them help us uh, as a working group um, create a community version of it. 
because I know they, they would like to see it, but they just don't have the time as a team. There's no, nobody schedules that because it's not really, you know, they have features to implement and it's not that high of priority for, for most teams. So um, giving them this kind of opportunity, hey, you know, tell us how it's done and we'll do it for you. I think um, that'll be appreciated by those. Yeah, so the, the other question I have is, do we have a list somewhere, a canonical list of the, the ones that, that are missing um, that you can share with me? You don't have to do it right now, but... Um, so so we can... have this wish list uh, wish that we wrote a, a few months ago, probably. Yeah. Um, I'll try to find it. Um, yeah, if you can find that, then I'll, then I'll look and uh, after the January meeting, um, and I'll, I'll try that. And I'll talk to um, Daniel Messier, who's the um, PM for it, for operator things, and um, a couple of the, I'll go back to a couple of the working group meetings on the operator framework folks, but it's really tracking down the individual project themselves and making sure, like the Rook or the Tecton person that, and, and getting them there. But we might get some oversight from the operator framework or support from them as well. So I, see. I, I think it makes sense to, to start with Tecton because then we could use it to build everything else with, with Tecton go. pipelines. There you go. Um, so, so that sounds like a, a good plan for 2021. Um, here we go, the hack MD. There you see, I would not have found that, Christian. Thank you. That, um, that's five months old already. Time, time, time has time flown. Yeah. Yes, yes, it has. Yeah, so maybe it's time to update this too. So we'll, we'll put that on the, this update. And uh, especially the operator is pulling lots of images from Quay. Um, are these images the same uh, that are used uh, with OpenShift? Because all OpenShift images are pulled from registry Red Hat uh, I.O. instead of Quay. Are these only mirrors? Is Tecton uh, um, modified in any way by, by OpenShift? Or is it only the operator that is from OpenShift? Oh, is Tecton's yeah. not on this list? I would have expected it would have been. It is. It's on there. On the it bottom. bottom. Oh, okay. So, um, well, what do you mean? Uh, the operators aren't. Uh, in, they're not part of the of the payload. They're not part of the core yep. uh, OpenShift. So the images uh, mm -hmm. that are referenced, they they can really live anywhere. Um, for operators, you can push them to Docker Hub or to Quay yeah. or to any other. But do other we have to tree. build them on on our own, or can we rely on that that the images are the so correct we'll, ones? We will have to build them ourselves. There is Oops. no automation as of now, so we have some we have some automation for this in in the Windows containers, uh, Windows machine config operator now. But even there, we only use that for CI testing at the actual release is another build of that. In the future, obviously, we want to kind of mirror that from CI, um, ideally. But um, yeah, there is no, like, we, we will need to build our automation for this, for it to be viable that all the teams just do it. Um, but right now, it's it's a few manual steps. So we currently just rebuild the images, uh, push them. Yes. Uh, and yeah, yeah, there is Take to consist. no automation yet. Tecton consists, I think, um, of uh, 20 to 30 images. So if it means we have to build every every one on our own, it's a, it's a huge task. Um, okay. I don't I don't think we, we can we can follow up on this later, maybe offline. But I don't think you're going to have to build all those individual images, Joseph. Really, what we need to do is is build the operator to reference those yep. images. If we want to use the ones that are already in Quay.io. Yeah, that was my question. Because that's what, because I actually built a disconnected install for um, Tecton um, version 0 0.1.18 using the, it, it, it's the files in the path, the, I'll post the path. I, I basically pre-downloaded all of those. 
would make things a lot uh, lots easier Go if you here. could use. If, if those uh, component images are built on CI, we can mirror them and then we'll just have to uh, rebuild the bundle image with your references mm -hmm. to all of them. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Bundle image, that was, the, that was the terminology I was searching for. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. the thing that has all the manifests in it of what to pull. Yeah, I have done the same uh, recently and it worked great, but uh, yeah, it, it worked. Uh, with the Quay images, I had only to build the bundle image, and uh, with the reference, I changed the reference in the cluster service version to images in my Quay folder. That was a, a step I, I made. Uh, it was a simple set command in, in some of one of the scripts, and uh, anything else worked out of the box. So I was hoping that uh, that is all we have to do. Get it one working. thing one thing that is different is the the operator that openshift delivers it also creates some scaffolding like it it automatically creates the pipeline service account um yep. it creates the openshift pipelines namespace where what what the link that i just sent you here it's more generic it creates a tecton pipelines it does not create a a service account so, so we probably want to we probably want to take the the code of the OpenShift operator and use it to build the to build the bundle, so it creates all the boilerplate as well. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it should work. So, mm -hmm. quick quick question. So this um, little journal or documentation that I'm asking Joseph to create on his journey to build this Tecton community CD pipeline community operator, would that be considered a recipe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We need to get our recipes space going. I yeah. created the organization and it's empty still. <laughs> I know. So, so I, and Jamie um, from UMish was going to do one on um, UPI? Or IPI or one of the UPI, I think. Um, so, but I think he's off on holiday, which is why he's not here. But um, I'm pretty um, sure IPI stuff is not very interesting since it's run a command and everything works. Yeah. So it's yeah, probably yeah. a UPI. It was the UPI one. The UPI yeah. One. I was trying to get my acronyms right. Um, so yeah. So maybe creating this recipe from whatever Joseph's doing, mm -hmm. and then having that available for the um, hackathon would be a good way of capturing the documentation on this. And what is the name of the OKD recipe repo? Uh, I actually it, created an organization for us to use called OKD Cookbook. Right yeah. now, I think Diane, you and I are the only members. Yeah. Can you find the, the, the URL for that and pop it yeah, in? Yeah, I'm getting it right now. Yeah. It might be on um, the community, the websites um, thing, but I thought it was in the community repo or something but we'll see but you get could I get access to it then I because I have a, a tecton repo already prepared in my yeah. own uh... yeah so if you put the repo up there and find there you go and let me just see if we can give Joseph um, I think since you created it you might have to be the one giving invite someone yeah. um, let me say Joseph There's some um, container application scaffolding stuff that I'm trying to uh, uh, get opened up that might be useful to, you know, have docs or or instances or examples and stuff as OKD cookbooks, if that fits in that purpose. Uh, if so, like, it'd be nice if I had access to that, to that org so I could add stuff when that is figured out. Although, admittedly, I don't know what OKD Cookbook is for, so. It's for recipes that tell people how to do stuff. Okay. Open shit. <laughs> yeah. Stop. Okay, so then what, I, what I'm. Yeah, okay. So then I might be interested on that, too. And What's you your... know what my username on GitHub is, right? Yeah, uh, remind me. Yeah. Conan dash kudo. Yeah. And my pass, I'm forgetting my password for you. Or they never mind. Yeah, What's if you can add them. Conan, that's right. 
Conan the Barbarian. There we go. No. <laughs> Not quite the right reference, but it still works. <laughs> it's the detective, right? Yes. See, Christian's got it. If you could also, um, uh, Charo, can you dig up as well, um, um, Jamie um, Magrid from, uh, I think that's his last name from Umish, his, um, and add him to that. That'll probably help nudge him along. Do, do you know his um, handle I'm off the top of your head? I'm looking. I'm looking. And let me just, GitHub's making me log back in. I love them. Um, I have to remember passwords. Join the cookbooks. Join the cookbook. There we go. I exist. Ooh. Yeah. I've got some stuff that I'm quote unquote cooking up for, you know, running stuff in OKD um, uh, or OpenShift or Kubernetes or whatever that might, some of it might make sense to throw into that, into that org, both personally and potentially organizationally. Okay. Yeah, I've got another org that I just created called Lab Monkeys where I'm working with some guys that we're building out a, a Quarkus application with Tecton pipelines. Demos. Hmm. It's it's intentionally it's three microservices. It's more than a hello world, but less than but less than Hellfire. Exactly <laughs> right. Like less than the kitchen sink. Right? <laughs> we, we wanted something that that people you know that people could see useful stuff, databases and messaging and reactive, but not have a million lines of code. So right. What it would be yeah. cool if be cool uh, the. If, uh, the if we could find uh, lots of uh, Red Hat repos with uh, Ecton pipelines in it, you know, eat your own dog food. Well, yeah, I mean, there, there so aren't a lot yet. A lot of the OpenShift folks, at least, they're still using Jenkins internally. Mm -hmm. We're we're starting. You know, I'm evangelizing. So, Charo, this is this is something that I actually have been thinking about a little bit. So. You know about Pega, right? Like the, the Git Forge stuff that we use in Fedora and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so Jenkins sucks. And also there's been an ask to have containerized Pega. I don't know what I'm doing, but it would be super cool if we could probably like, it's a relatively straightforward Python Flask based application, minimal requirements and stuff. It'd be super cool if we could maybe work together on doing a thing where we take this application, Tecton CICD, Containerized, making the application run using stuff in from OKD, using you know Postgres operator stuff like that, all all the all the fancy, and 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 make this like it's a non-trivial production-worthy application that people would use, and they can see how this fits, and it can plug into the the rest of the OpenShift lifecycle, like using Tecton CD as the as the CI for code posted inside of the thing and so on and so on and so on. So it's been a personal project that like I wanted to do, but I don't know how to do. So uh, is that something that might be interesting? Like it'd be cool if you and we could work together on figuring out how to do that. Yeah, let's start chatting about it on Slack. Yeah, sure. Uh, I should be in both the Kubernetes and OpenShift Commons Slack. So hit me up on whichever one you want to talk to me on. Uh, Kubernetes, we've already added, so you're on there. Yeah. Do I'm on both, thankfully, thanks to Diane. Yeah, yeah I, I hook everybody up. Um, I, and have to, I, I need to drop, because I'm, I'm actually doing a Quarkus demo here in just a few minutes. So I have a qu quick question for Christian. So thank you, Charo. Have a wonderful holiday. Um, we'll talk to you in January. Hopefully nothing will go wrong between now and then. Um, and just just write some Thanks, recipes Charo. down. Happy holidays. Yeah. Um, See you guys. Bye, Charo. Bye, Charo. Bye, Charo. Merry Christmas. A quick question for Christian on the um, Tecton Hub uh, there. Is that is that yeah. brand new? Is that brand new? I, I think... have 
that is pretty new. It's still in preview. Um, and that would be, it's, yeah, it's, it's another hub to share um, things. And in this case, uh, share uh, Hecton pipelines and tasks. Ooh, this is that's definitely getting shared internally. <laughs> Why wait? I'm going to, I'm tweeting that. That is, that is awesome. <laughs> Looks nice. Nice. So I, yeah, I, I saw that recently. I, I'm not sure how old it is, but it seems pretty new. Um, yeah. And that is, uh, I think, an easy way to share those kind of kinds of things without having to uh, have the the sources in the same uh, repository or organization. Ooh. Obviously, for for some you know bespoke OKD things, we could always. Um, yeah. Create a repository of um, They should have an official one, official verified community and bespoke. Um, yes. That would that be my mind, and it, you should wear a bow tie or something. All right. Um, so I think we're. I'm going to stop sharing, um, and I think we're almost to the end of our hour. So um, everybody, even those silent folks. Um, yeah, and Joseph, I. I did not hear the interesting part. Oh, is Diane still here? <laughs> Grown out, I think. To have a video. So much for that, I guess. I think <laughs> her <laughs> connectivity basically went to zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so if so someone if could, someone could add me to the members of this repo, it would be very nice. Hey guys. So I think Charo maintains uh, that. Okay. If, yeah. you, if he hasn't yeah. done it already, um, he, he yeah. has to do his demo now. But I just sent him your GitHub. Thank you. Uh, yep. Yeah. And I just, for no reason at all, dropped and Blue Jean said that's the end of the year for us. Uh, so. <laughs> Thank you all for coming, and we will see you in 2021. So stay healthy and um, keep, write, keep writing recipes if you didn't hear the last thing before I dropped off. Thank you all. Thank you, Diane, Thank you. for hosting us all year. Nice Christmas. Good Christmas, and uh, stay healthy. Yeah, Friedrich, good Weihnachtszeit. Danke, danke, Bruce. Probably not. Bitte. There we go. Ciao. Ciao. Okay. okay, take care, guys. And um, wherever you are, just be safe. See ya. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.